Welcome back to uh, Capitol Report. We are pleased to welcome for the first time Dr. Gregory Lamort, who is the president of the New Jersey Dental Association. Good to see you, doctor. Thanks for being here. Doctor, welcome. Looking forward to meeting both of you. Well, we'll see <laughs> if you answering your question. We'll see if you say that after the segment. Um, <laughs> no, in all seriousness, come on. Let's talk about oral health, uh, which does not get enough attention. Right out of the box, the uh, ACA, the Affordable Care Act. You have specific concerns, doctor, about the fact that some aspects of the ACA do not cover those who need to be covered as it relates to oral health. Make the case. This is what happened. Ch there's coverage for children, and there's no coverage for adults. And as a result, one of the things that's occurred is that some adults have dropped their insurance coverage out of concern just to make sure that their children alone are covered. So they drop their insurance so that they can get Pay insurance that covers premiums, their kids. Pay the, for the premiums to cover their kids. So it's hurt. So it's hurt the uh, insurance it's, for adults. Yeah, in some ways it has. And, and so that's why you guys did not support the uh, Affordable Care Act. Exactly. Oh, but, but 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 doctor, those who are putting together the Affordable Care Act, the Obama administration. Are you saying that they, they did not think through the implications of what would happen if they did this in terms of the oral health of older of pe people who aren't kids? I mean, they, they had to think that through. Somebody dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. So you think they actually didn't <laughs> think through what would happen? I don't know. I don't know that I would put it exactly that way, but it wasn't included, and it, we feel it should have been included. But what can, it, can it be fixed? I'm yeah, sorry. We're not on the same Any, plan. Actually, yeah. That's what I want to know. Can, can it be changed? Anything could be changed as long as there are political will. <laughs> is it there? doesn't seem right now like there is a political will to change it, but we'll see as time goes on. So what are people doing right now? How are they dealing with their oral health issues if they don't have that coverage? Well, what, that's an interesting question because one of the problems that's occurred, we've seen an increase in visits to the emergency room. Which is what we don't want. We yeah. don't want that. In fact, I, I appointed a task force at New Jersey Dental Association, which we're studying the problem and we're going to come up with a plan in order to deal with that. By the way, your association, tell folks what you do, because you represent a lot of dentists. We have almost 8,000, we have, uh, there's 8,000 dentists in New Jersey and we represent about two thirds of them. And you know, the, the issue of getting your teeth taken care of, of having mm -hmm. um, oral care, is bigger than just about taking care of your teeth, right? Because there are links between oral there's, health and general health. There's Talk absolutely, about that. Li absolutely links, and uh, I could tell you about a few of them if you're interested. Go ahead, sure. Please. No, we are very. Our audience is as well. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about periodontal disease, because I'm a periodontist, so primarily uh, that's what I take care of. The inflammation in somebody's gums from periodontal disease, they produce factors that can cause inflammation in other parts of the body and in other arteries. So in fact, there is a linkage between in untreated periodontal disease and cardiac artery disease. Hold on, wait a minute. You're saying if you don't do the right thing, take care of your teeth, your gums, oral health overall, there's a connection between that and potential heart problems? Yes, there's also, there's also a, a connection between uncontrolled diabetes because of diabetics that don't have, a, don't have, have an infection, which, and gum disease is a chronic infection, can have trouble with the, in controlling their sugar level. Do most dentists talk to their patients, doctor, about the correlation, the connections between overall oral health and the rest of these medical Actually, issues? Actually, we encourage them to. I mean, are they aware of it? Oh, dentists, our dentists, oh, the dentists are, are definitely aware, aware yeah, of it. Yeah. Def there's no question. But patients, our job in public broadcasting is to try to help people be aware of this. Um, do you think most citizens are aware of that correlation? No, I think that we need to increase dental, dental, uh, Dental Literacy. education. Yeah. It's not really, but it's not just, that, sorry for interrupting, doctor. It isn't just <laughs> dental education. It's the connection, it's education about the connection between oral health and our overall health. Well, the point is it's, it's health education and That's dental right. health is part of the But you said that there were a few, a few links. You talked about one. What are some of the other links? Uh, untreated periodontal disease and low weight, uh, low weight babies. Really? Yes. Do what's the connection? It, well, we don't know exactly what the connection is, but it has to do, we think, with inflammation. Uh, are, are these recent findings? Because I never heard this, and my parents are doctors. They are relative. Uh, well, I'm, yo I'm young. Yes, <laughs> I can clearly, see that. Clearly. I can see that. <laughs> They're within the last decade or so. 
the, the connection has become clear. Right. Dentists always knew that the that teeth and gums were connected to the rest of the body, but it <laughs> took time to convince uh, some of our colleagues. Raf, the association put out this information: 200 diseases are born in the mouth. <laughs> Correct, 200 diseases. <laughs> that 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 is amazing. Yeah. By the way. Public water fluoridation in the time oh. we have left. We have to talk about this. New Jersey ranks 49th out of 50 states in its percentage <laughs> of the population that drinks fluoridated public water, according, according to the what CDC. Is, why does fluoridated? that even matter? Fl fluoridated water is what? And why does it matter that we rank 49th out of 50th in terms of fluoridated water? Every Surgeon General in my lifetime has said that fluoridating water was the number one dental health issue that we should attend to. Because with kids that have fluoride have less cavities, less, what less is, toothaches, is, is, less time from school. What is fluoride? Fluoride is a mineral. Huh. And when our teeth are formed, the fluoride is incorporated into the minerals in the teeth. And it makes them less prone to tooth decay. But they're brushing their teeth and they're doing those things, but they need fluoridated water? Well, the, be the, best, the best way to get that fluoride is into the tooth when it's developing. So fluoride for children is so important. So why are we 49 out of the 50s? Does it cost a lot of money to fluoridate the water? Well, is that it depends who you, who you talk to. Uh -huh. uh, we, don't think it, we think that the savings would be multiple times uh -huh. what, it, what it would cost. But what do you do to fluoridate the water? Because right now, 86% of all New Jersey kids, 7.1 million New Jerseyans, well, do not receive fluoridated water. And, and the public school kids don't have it either. Forget about the lead issue. We'll be dealing with that in another. What would it cost? Do I don't know? know exactly what it would cost, but we'd have to get we have to get either the state dental health uh, department or we'd have to get the governor online to to get all the water companies to agree to fluoride. Right, and have you water. talked to the governor? Have you talked to the legislature? <laughs> yeah, they tell us that it would be that the water companies say that it would be too expensive and they'd have to pass that expense on to the public and as soon as po some politicians think that it's in increased across to the public they decided that it wasn't worth doing but, but isn't there a cost to the public for not doing it doctor much greater than than doing it but we'd love to see it <laughs> we'd love to be way up there the only one that's worse than us is hawaii and we'd like to be much much closer to the top in fact we'd like to be number one quick question one. last before you let you go does new jersey's legislature have a single representative in i know jerry cardinal senator cardinal is a dentist anyone else yeah one of my classmates from dental school uh joe panaccio uh, Senator, Senator, Senator Panaccio. Joe Panaccio. Listen, uh, Dr. Gregory Lamort is the president of the New Jersey Dental Association. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much for having us. And that's it for this edition of New Jersey Capital Report. For my colleague Steve Adubato, I'm Rafael Piroman. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week.